as the use of ultrasound can be very helpful in identifying the conus, which should be avoided during the procedure. It can also help with estimating the amount of available CSF in the subarachnoid space and rule out hematoma in the epidural space from prior failed attempts. Lastly, if the position seems suboptimal, then you can put the patient in a different position and use ultrasound to see if it changes the quantity of CSF. The first thing we do is to evaluate the subarachnoid space for CSF. Here, we're able to identify the conus, the phylum, a good amount of CSF, and what appears to be an epidural hematoma. Here is a still image demonstrating the important structures seen in the previous clip. To tap or not to tap? The question you really need to be asking is not, is there a hematoma? The real question is, is there adequate CSF to get a good sample? What do you think? Is there adequate CSF to attempt to tap? This hematoma is identified by the arrows, but you will note that there is virtually no CSF in the subarachnoid space. Here are a few things to note about spinal hematomas. Extraaxial fluid collections are common after landmark-based LP. Scanning can be done in longitudinal or transverse plane. The ultrasound appearance of hematoma can be isoechoic to echogenic or even be heterogeneous. In the setting of a hematoma, additional blind LP attempts are often unsuccessful. However, hematomas typically resolve in two to five days. And finally, the use of ultrasound to guide lumbar puncture can mitigate complications and more importantly, diagnostic delay. Now, if you will just wait a day or two and repeat the ultrasound, you will be able to determine when it makes sense to attempt a tap.